I'm Nathan Smith. I'm an associate curator in the Dinosaur Institute at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. I'm here to talk to you about every dinosaur that you can find in the Jurassic Park films. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Brachiosaurus was a member of the sauropod group, so these are the huge long neck plant eaters. Brachiosaurus was one of the animals with longer forelimbs and a vertically held neck that it probably used for high browsing. So in the first Jurassic Park movie, you see it up there in the tops of the trees, sneezing on the kids. Parasaurolophus is one of the crested duck-billed dinosaurs. They have kind of a elongate crest on their head. Some of these might have been used for vocalization or also display characteristics for kind of recognizing their own species or for sexual display. They also had a really amazing battery of teeth that helped them grind up plant material. So the Velociraptor is probably the most famous dinosaur from Jurassic Park. In real life, Velociraptor was a much smaller animal, probably about the size of a, a really big turkey. One of the most interesting things about it is that we know this animal and the, the group it belongs to were very close relatives of birds. And we actually have evidence now that came out since the first film that Velociraptor probably was at least partially covered in feathers. There are actually bony quill knobs that are present on its forearm. Velociraptor was kind of a fleet-footed, fast animal, possibly more intelligent than some other dinosaurs. I'm not sure if they were really as hyper-intelligent as they're portrayed in the film, but there's got to be a little artistic license with that. Triceratops is another iconic dinosaur known from the late Cretaceous, so the, the Hell Creek formation. You know, three very large horns and the frill on the back. Uh, this is an animal that lived alongside Tyrannosaurus and is often depicted with Tyrannosaurus, and it plays a, a big role in the early Jurassic Park films as well. Uh, it's actually an animal that gets sick because of the, the plant life that's been reproduced alongside the dinosaurs in the first film. Tyrannosaurus rex, one of the most popular dinosaurs of all time, one of the, the greats of the Jurassic Park film franchise. T-Rex is always kind of portrayed as the top dinosaur because for the longest time it was the largest predatory dinosaur that we knew of. Um, recent discoveries kind of only in the past 15 or 20 years have shown that there are several other species of large carnivorous dinosaur that are now vying for that title. So it's possible that Tyrannosaurus has been dethroned as the largest carnivore. So there's a big point made in the first film that T-Rex had relatively poor vision. Uh, and there is some evidence that its other senses might have been a little more well-developed, its sense of smell, for instance. But I find it a little unlikely that T-Rex would have been unable to see some of the humans standing right in front of it. So in the second Jurassic Park film, T-Rex actually gets loose, I think, in San Diego and is running around downtown and then the suburbs. Again, I think uh, this is an animal that probably would have been more confused than anything else and probably would have been not quite on a rampage, but just trying to get out of there and away from everybody. The Lophosaurus also plays an iconic role in Jurassic Park. This is the animal that uh, takes out Nedry in one of the Jurassic Park jeeps during the rainstorm. Now, there is a little bit of artistic license uh, used for the portrayal of the Lophosaurus because it probably did not have that large frill, and there's also no evidence that it actually spat poison. However, in reality, some of the specimens we have of the Lophosaurus were much larger than the animal that's portrayed in Jurassic Park. So this is a rare instance where the real thing might have been even bigger and scarier. It probably would have likely attacked uh, without first alerting someone like Nedry to its presence, without using a frill and without using poison. Just the old fashioned coming right at him with the teeth. So Gallimimus is an animal that uh, is known from one of the most famous scenes of Jurassic Park where they're actually herding through an open field and coming right after the protagonist, Alan Grant and, and the kids. And we learn shortly after that they're actually fleeing from a very hungry T-Rex. These uh, are probably correctly portrayed as being some of the speediest animals that were around during the late Cretaceous. Procomp Segnathus is another animal that plays a big role in Jurassic Park but it's a little better described in the actual book series. So this is an animal that's a very small, 
carnivorous or predatory dinosaur that is, because of its size, maybe a little unassuming, but actually plays a, a major role both in the beginning of the movie and at the end uh, in some of the, the folks that it takes out. We don't actually have direct evidence of kind of social behavior or this kind of gregariousness for procompsignatus, but we do have some evidence of mass death assemblages of the same species of dinosaur that suggested these animals might have hung out kind of in large groups. Stegosaurus, another iconic dinosaur, one of people's favorites. This is kind of the armor-plated dinosaur with a big series of spikes on the back of its tail. That tail probably was very much a defensive weapon for Stegosaurus, and, and certainly it probably would have used it to protect itself or to protect its offspring. One interesting fact about Stegosaurus is that we still don't really have a good handle on what those plates were used for. Pachycephalosaurus, another iconic dinosaur from Jurassic Park, and this is a member of the group, the Pachycephalosaurus, that have the big domed heads that often get portrayed in popular media as being used for headbutting each other or in Jurassic Park for headbutting those rangers that are trying to corral it or even ramming into the side of a jeep door. Ceratosaurus is an animal that's not quite as well known. It actually gets its name from a horn that it has right on the tip of the snout. So it is a, a carnivorous dinosaur, a member of the theropod group. One interesting thing about Ceratosaurus is that it represents an evolutionary lineage that's going to kind of branch off and be a little bit separate from most of the other carnivorous dinosaurs that we see in the Jurassic Park films. Carithosaurus, this animal is a duck-billed dinosaur, a member of the Lambiosaur group, a plant eater. It doesn't have the really elongate crests of animals like Augustinolophus or Parasaurolophus, uh, but it does have this kind of high domed crest that actually looks superficially kind of like what you might see on the head of a cassowary today. Ankylosaurus is another very famous dinosaur. So these are the heavily armored dinosaurs, they're quadrupedal very short and stout. Ankylosaurus is very well known for having this really robust and big tail club situated at the end of the tail that it probably did use as a defensive weapon. Although it's interesting to note that not all ankylosaurs possess that tail club. Spinosaurus, this is an animal that plays a big role in the third Jurassic Park film as kind of the main villain of that film, and it's recognized by its huge uh, sail that comes across the, the back. Now, th this is a group of animals that we didn't really know much about until recently with kind of a flurry of new discoveries, although some of the first ones were discovered almost 100 years ago. So Spinosaurus and the larger group, the Spinosauridae, that it belongs to are animals that were actually semi-aquatic. It's probably spending some time in the water. It's probably uh, living and doing a lot of its feeding near the water, and including from some of the large fish that were around during this time in the, in the Cretaceous. Whether or not it was using that sail uh, to help propel itself through the water is maybe a little more doubtful in a little bit of artistic license. But it's definitely the case that these animals were more adapted to life in the water than we had previously given them credit for. So Spinosaurus is also famous from the third Jurassic Park film for doing battle with Tyrannosaurus, um, one of the, the largest dinosaurs of all time, and recent studies of new specimens of Spinosaurus have also suggested that this animal probably rivaled Tyrannosaurus in size. Pteranodon shows up in a lot of the Jurassic Park films. It's probably one of the most well-known uh, pterosaurs in the films. So this is an animal that's actually not a dinosaur. It's a flying reptile, a member of the group Pterosauria, that are closely related to dinosaurs, but not dinosaurs themselves. So in Jurassic World, there's also a, a very famous scene where there's kind of a pteranodon attack on the main part of the park where everybody's running around and fleeing, sometimes drink in hand. And we see pteranodons swoop in and actually grab people and pick them up with their, their hind feet, which definitely would have been impossible. These animals wouldn't have been able to hold that much weight, and they also probably aren't using their feet for grasping and attacking prey the way kind of a, an, an eagle or a hawk would. And these animals are probably uh, attacking and taking prey more similar to like a, a modern stork.
oh. Mosasaurus and uh, Mosasauria are not actually dinosaurs. These are animals that are actually closely related to lizards. So the movie kind of portrays Mosasaurus as hunting its prey near the water's edge. And there, there might be some evidence for that because many of them are found in shallow marine settings. But it's also quite likely that they were hunting other animals actively in the water, uh, including large ammonoids that lived in this western interior seaway. Baryonyx is an animal that shows up in one of the new Jurassic Park films. People will immediately recognize it looks a lot like Spinosaurus, but just lacking that giant sail. And that is because it's a member of that same group of dinosaurs, the Spinosauridae. Carnotaurus is another animal that shows up in the new Jurassic Park film. This animal gets its name for the kind of low, bulbous horns that are sticking out just above the eyes. And if you're not looking too quick, this animal might look like just another large predatory dinosaur, similar to T. rex. You might even be thrown off by the fact that this animal has very stubby forelimbs. But this is actually a member of the group called the Abelosaurs, which are common during the late Cretaceous on the, the southern continents. So they kind of in many ways might have played a role similar to T-Rex, but on the southern continents during that time. Allosaurus is another well-known dinosaur. So this animal would have been a large-bodied predatory dinosaur, kind of near the top of the food chain during the late Jurassic. Uh, would have been a contemporary of animals like Stegosaurus, Apatosaurus, Brachiosaurus. Apatosaurus is another large plant-eating sauropod dinosaur, so really long-necked, although compared to Brachiosaurus, this animal would have held its neck more horizontally. It's possible that the difference in, in necks between animals like Apatosaurus and Brachiosaurus probably reflects feeding differences. These animals were probably browsing at, at different heights in the trees that were around during the late Jurassic, with uh, Brachiosaurus kind of able to reach a lot more of the high vegetation. So one of the most interesting facts about Apatosaurus has to do with another dinosaur, Brontosaurus. Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus looked very, very similar, and Brontosaurus might actually just be the adult version of Apatosaurus. Since Apatosaurus had been named first, it had priority, the animals were kind of sunk into each other as one species. Some new studies have suggested that the specimens that make up the material of Brontosaurus may be distinct enough to warrant them being its own uh, genus. Uh, so in the past couple of years, Brontosaurus has been brought back. Whether it stays that way, who's to say? So there are scenes in Jurassic Park where B.D. Wong or Dr. Henry talks about how they've modified the genes of some of these dinosaurs and that some of the traits that they've selected for have had unintended consequences which play out throughout the film. So Indominus Rex in the new Jurassic World movie allows uh, the folks at the park to kind of play around a little more and actually combine together several different dinosaurs to make something even bigger and even scarier. I think it makes for a great villain in the movies and it allows the film to go in a little bit more of a horror movie direction or kind of a, a Frankenstein's monster type style which allows for a lot more suspenseful moments and kind of new themes and topics in the film. So there's one scene in the film where Indominus kind of starts to communicate with the Velociraptors um, and we learn that Indominus Rex actually has some Velociraptor DNA. That might be more of a stretch uh, than some of the other aspects of the film, but at this point we've kind of already bought into the world they've created. Indoraptor is the new villainous dinosaur in the Jurassic World franchise, Fallen Kingdom. And what they seem to do is have taken Indominus Rex and combined it with uh, more raptor DNA. So I almost kind of envision Christopher Walken somewhere shaking a cowbell and shouting, I need more raptor, I need more raptor in this dinosaur. So they kind of crank up the raptor a little bit and create an animal that supposedly is even more dangerous, even more deadly for the new film. So I think Jurassic Park and Jurassic World sometimes take a lot of flack from scientists for inaccuracies, like any films do when they're trying to portray natural history. But in reality, they've actually done a really great job of trying to focus on getting the anatomy of the animals right, getting inferences about their behavior, their vocalizations, other things correct. Now, certainly, they take artistic license like any films do, but more so than a lot of the films that have featured dinosaurs in the past, Jurassic Park and that franchise have, have really tried to involve the scientists and get uh, accurate depictions of what these animals might have looked like. And I think that just adds to how fascinating the films actually are. Welcome to Jurassic World.